Hello all and welcome back to the channel. Bit of an odd one today, if I change t-shirts halfway through it's because I'm re-filming part of the video. When I loaded it up I noticed that there was a load of interference on the microphone. So to catch you up on what's happened so far, which I'm kind of redoing in this video, I bought the Garmin Zumo XT in this video and I fitted that to the Super Adventure with the KTM Power Parts mount. That worked completely fine, it's got like a clicking in mechanism which works fine. It's it's just not very confidence inspiring. I've never had a problem with it coming off, but yeah. The other thing I'd like, the KTM mount has no form of security and the Garmin standard sort of attachment has no form of security as well. Someone could literally just walk up and pick it off and walk off with it. So when I nip in to get a coffee and cake, which I inevitably will do, I kind of like the idea that I can just leave it on the bike and not even have to worry about it. So in the video that I've just filmed that I'm not going to upload, I fitted this, which is the Toratec GPS mount. The Garmin goes into that, can still charge and everything, and you have a set of keys which you can lock and unlock whether you can access the Garmin or not, which is really nice. So it means I can take it off and go and update it if I want to, go and plug it into the PC. Uh, it means I can also leave it on the bike all the time if I want to as well. Going into work the other day, I noticed something that I wasn't incredibly happy about. I'll put that in now. This is obviously the Garmin man I uh, have just fitted and you guys have just poorly watched me what. Uh, are you gonna let me through? Yeah, boy. Cheers, mate. And uh, as you can see, well, I'm hoping you can see, because I'm trying to pay attention to the lorries and vans and stuff. Thanks, bro. It's actually uh, on the wonk. You can see it's leaning to the right. Now, I assume that is because the uh, Garmin in that mount is too heavy for the plastic thing in the middle. I've tried straightening it up a bit but it just keeps going back to that so look you can do that anyway back to me as you can imagine i can't have a lovely squared on tft and then a slightly wonky my wrist just clicked getting old uh, and then a wonky uh, sat nav it really bugged me as soon as i saw that i got home and i ordered this you'll know exactly what i bought if you watch ricardo yeep's channel but this is a Toratec mount which essentially goes behind the TFT, and then you get an accessory bar which goes between the two. So essentially, it just replaces that KTM mount. It's a bit of a shame because that was about 50 quid, so was this. This is metal, so there's no wobbling, there's no plastic give or anything like that. The only thing I'm a little bit unsure on, the bar that goes across here, you can see there's holes for it here which you, can, you essentially screw it into which is fine, there's no reason to say you couldn't unscrew it. I guess if someone's turned up with an Allen key set to steal your Zoom OXT, then they're gonna get it regardless, aren't they? So in this video, I'm gonna fit that instead of that. The other thing I will show, which will probably, I've already done it, so it's probably not gonna be me in this black t-shirt, it'd be me in a red one. I also hardwired the Zumo into the Hex Easy Can. In my last video fitting the Zumo, this one, I wired it to the battery and the reason I did that is one because my dad has had exactly the same Zumo XT on his Triumph Tiger he's had it on the bike all the time but powered off and it doesn't drain the battery at all but also I find it quite annoying when I'm looking at someone for a tutorial and they've got something that I don't have so by me wiring it into a hex easy can or the accessory ports on the bike not everyone has that option or luxury on their bike so if i was watching it to wire it into my bike and uh i didn't have a hex easy can i'd be like well what's the point in watching this video that was the reason i did it but i was met with a thousand and one comments like why didn't you wire it into the accessory ports why didn't you wire it into the hex easy can that's stupid meh, 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 meh. Don't unfollow me, it's a joke. In the Hex Easy Can box, you get a load of these. These are just two prong connectors which connect to the Hex's spare ports, if you've got a spare port on there. You just solder those onto the battery terminal connections on the Garmin's power lead. The reason I went to the Hex rather than the accessory ports in the front is because I've already run the wire to the battery compartment, so why not use the Hex? The Hex Easy Cam works as a switch live as well, so it'll only ever power up when the bike turns on. So first port call, I'm gonna get that off the bike and then I will bring you back when the bike's stripped down a bit. 
This is roughly what the bike looks like at the moment, ignoring the massive reflection. To get this off, take your screen off, which is just these four bolts. That obviously brings out the KTM mount if you have one of those as well. You will have something that looks essentially like this, and you've got the shrouds that go around the edge. They literally just pull upwards and back a little bit, so you're pulling like that, and that will pop out. Once you've got that out, you will see there will be four screws here um, that you just need to remove. And then you will have these shrouds as well, which go around the edge. They essentially pull up and back. They are literally just push connectors. You can see there, these will not come off unless you unbolt those two bolts at the top in here. So to take all of this off to the point where I'm at, you only need to undo eight bolts, four for the screen, four in the top here. Next port of call is you've got a bolt here, which is holding the TFT in place. I don't know if you can see that. Undo that. There's one on the other side as well. That will then allow you to leave, move the TFT away. And then once you've done that, you can undo these bolts here. That is where the uh, Toratec mount is gonna go behind. So we'll get that done and I'll bring you back in a second. So uh, here's my TFT. <laughs> when you undo these two bolts here, there is another bolt in there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me come around the other side. There, I don't know if you can see that light hole there. Now, what should happen is this should lean forward. For some reason, mine won't come out. If I'm honest, this side looks like it's been snapped at some point. Obviously not my doing because I uh, have never done this before. I've never taken it apart to this extent before. So not sure what's happened there, but I mean, what, what's happened happened. So I ended up having to take a, a Torx T25 just behind here, an Allen key, just to take out the bolts. This is the one that came out of the screen or the back of the TFD. And then you get sent four of these and they are slightly longer. And then the idea of that, that new longer bolt goes through the spacer, through the uh, mount and then into the back of the screen, and then it goes back in there. And then this is essentially gonna go behind this screen. Now this should be, like I said before, this should be easier when this comes out, but that is gonna attach on the bottom of there and come in like that. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be really fiddly, but the bolts that go into it don't actually have that many turns. They seem to do it quite quickly. So get the finger tight and then use an Allen key or whatever you've got to do them up the rest of the way. Just so you can see, Again, sorry if it's overexposed. You've got the four bolts in, you won't be able to see the one under there. There's one there, one there, one under the other side, and one under here. There we go, pretty simple to do. As you can see here, it is all back together. I've got the side panels on. I've now put the crossbar on as well. That is literally just two bolts in the side. Uh, it is solid, really solid. Next port call is to get the Garmin Zumo mount off of the KTM Power Parts one. This is the Garmin Zumo XT Touratec bracket, uh, and that is fitted to the KTM Power Parts mount or GPS mount. I need to put the U bracket on there. So essentially, those two holes here um, are gonna be used for that. And that is then gonna go round this mount here. Right, so I don't know if you can actually see this because this is gonna be a lot of faffery. Bolt through washer through there. On here, there is a cutout for the power button, which goes up the top that way. These washers go, or the, the spacers go in here. The plate washer. These are pre loctited uh, nuts as well, which is really good. So that's essentially what it looks like. You got this, this side. And then there's a cutout here, which is for the power button on the Garmin. If you're trying to press this button here, which is the release for the Garmin, once you open it, you can press the button. Once that is closed, it stops you having a access to that release button, which is fantastic. So now that is in there, I've got the four bolts in. Hopefully you can see that. And then you've got the two additional bolts. This is very fiddly. Right, so that is now all of those bolts in. 
I'm leaving this undone because if I leave this undone I can then clamp it around the accessory bar which you're currently sat on and then do up the bolt. I can literally just take this one off then do it back up. It means it doesn't disappear. So those four bolts are done up now. That doesn't fit in there mate. Interesting. Yeah, when this is open, that does touch these. Yeah, I mean, that feels so much more solid. Yeah, I don't know, can you see that? It uh, hits these, watch these when I open it up. So it pushes them apart. So I need to make sure that's not gonna get in the way So the only thing left to do now is I need to tidy up this wiring. Uh, I need to actually make sure the Garmin fits in there nicely, but that is solid. If I put the screen up and down, like so, that's not gonna move. Whereas on the other one, because it was on the screen, it meant it came up and down with it. When you had the screen in the highest position, which is what I often did, it put all the weight further up, which meant it wobbled more. Like the screen wobbled, this wobbled and everything. So let's get the Garmin in and see what it looks like. So hopefully this is part, the last part of this video, or this part of the video, should I say. Then if you go back to the me in the past after this, I'll show you how to program it into the hex easy can. This is what it looks like though. So I do need to tidy up the wiring that's coming out the back here. I'm just gonna zip tie that along the bottom to this, but I think that looks really good. It is bang on level, I don't know if you saw. I used the spirit level up there, just to make sure it's bang on. On the KTM mount, this was like out here somewhere. So it was way, way further out. Although you can see all the bolts and everything, it still looks quite cool behind there. You can move this up and down without it actually moving the Garmin at all. So there you go. So what I'm gonna try and do is I am going to solder the black and the orange or red to the end of the Garmin connectors and then uh, that will just plug in to the spare lead like so. And then we just program it. I'm gonna solder those together and then uh, these are just heat shrinks that we can go over the top. They're soldered together, they've got heat shrinks on individually, then they're wrapped in uh, electrical tape, then there's uh, another heat shrink on the outside, kind of just as additional protection. I've got the accessory manager open for hex, so I'm just gonna plug that in. So as you'll see here, I've got my red circuit, my blue circuit, which are both of my auxiliary lights. I've got my yellow circuit, which is now set to an accessory circuit, and my white circuit, which is set as the horn. All you need to do is you literally click on those and you can check whatever you want. You can have the auxiliary lights, you can accessories, horns, all that sort of stuff. And you can also set the ampage. I don't know whether you guys can see that, but that says four ramps there. These will automatically change anyway. So if I set this to a light, it goes up to five, at five amps and change, but you can set that by clicking and you have the option of changing the ampage there. That has now given me this accessory down the bottom. I have a timeout down here as well. What I might do as well is just take that time timeout down to down. I'll take that down to a five second timeout. I know that the white circuit here is actually the horn. I've checked that. Um, so I know this one should theoretically work. Unplug this. And then if I just connect this to the accessory port, if I press power on the bike, there we go, yeah boy. So you can see up here in the top corner that that has power going to it. And if I turn the bike off, that's gone green now. External power lost, though I will check for updates and turn off. So the hex is powered through the canvas system on the bike, so that will now not draw any power at all unless the bike is turned on, which is fantastic. Uh, it also means every time I turn the bike on, the Garmin should turn on. Really, really simple to do on the Hex EasyCan software as well. It was literally just a case of change to accessory, press OK, done. I'm gonna tidy up the battery bay now, but other than that, 
hardwired into the hex easy cam quite happy with that i'm not really planning on taking it on and off that much so it's not really a bother to me if the once in a blue moon that i take it off the bike i have to unbolt the screen then whatever i still can get it in and out with the screen in place i've tried it um, it's just very tight and you have to sort of give it a jiggle and stuff overall as a mount that is way better than the ktm1 to support the Touratech case obviously as you'd expect so thank you very much for joining me if you haven't seen me already in my red t-shirt that'll happen next or it might have just happened i'm really happy with that as you can tell if you've got any questions comment section below as usual and i will see you in next week's video